um, actually really nice to be celebrating um, this part of Greenpeace in New Zealand's history as well as commemorating it because it's, um, it is a sad part of our history and it's certainly part of New Zealand's and Greenpeace's history. So it's wonderful to be in such a joyful exhibition and it's really inspired Scott because you have brought together a whole group a whole group of different mediums that are telling a, a really significant part of New Zealand's history. So thank you, and it's actually very nice to be up in Northland because um, this is where the warrior, the original warrior, is buried up in Matauri Bay, which um, a group of us from Greenpeace about six weeks ago went up to clean up the track up there. It's a, it's a beautiful spot, and we were incredibly lucky at the time that the people of Matauri Bay and Northland offered us that place for the warrior to be buried because it really is magical and if you haven't been there you should definitely go. The sculpture that Chris Booth did on the top of the hill there with using the prop from the old warrior is beautiful and um, um, I really encourage you to go and have a look because it is beautiful and you can actually get up there quite easily now that we've done a little bit of work on the track. Last night I um, went to visit some friends, actually it was the house of the first cook on the Rainbow Warrior, Hilary Anderson, and she had invited us over there for dinner because it was 25 years ago yesterday that the warrior sailed into, for the first time, into Waitemata Harbour. And I have really strong memories of that because I had been away from New Zealand for about seven years, so it was a real homecoming for me. And I know also that the, the Greenpeace office in New Zealand... What was had um, worked really hard to get the warrior down into this. Oh God, I'm useless at this, sorry. <laughs> you have to excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Scott's going to give you one of them. Let, uh, <laughs> thank you. I just no, raised your toilet before because I knew this would happen. Anyway, um, I'll be okay. Um, it was the, the Greenpeace New Zealand office had worked really hard inside the organisation of Greenpeace to get the warrior down into the Pacific because the Pacific in the 1980s, and probably all of us here remember, but many people in New Zealand don't, particularly our school kids. In the 1980s, nuclear weapons were the biggest security threat to our planet and the Pacific had already seen a whole history of the nuclear industry in the, in the North Pacific with the Americans where they'd done their testing, the French Polynesia where the French were continuing to do their testing, and even where the Japanese wanted to start dropping their nuclear waste into the North Pacific, into very deep parts of the North Pacific. So there was a past and a present um, reality um, for the Pacific region. And New Zealand was, along with other countries in the Pacific, was really awakened to the fact that the, the most significant thing that a small nation like us could do to contribute to nuclear disarmament globally was to declare ourselves to be nuclear free. So when we arrived, it was a quite significant event for the Greenpeace office. They didn't realise at the time how significant it was going to be. But it was a, it was a, a, a wonderful... Um, a wonderful arrival with the, the, the Peace Squadron and all the boats that had been for many years in New Zealand out on the waters protesting against the nuclear armed or sh and um, powered ships that were coming into our harbours actually got to get out and welcome a ship into their harbour that was going to be on their side. So it was a wonderful um, arrival back into New Zealand and we spent the next three days um, getting ready to go to French Polynesia, and meeting with all the flotilla skippers and crews that were going to sail with us up to French Polynesia. So it was, um, yeah, it was, a it was a shocking thing that happened. It was a tragic thing because we lost Fernando. And, um, and if there's any silver lining in it, it was absolutely affirmed, I think, and helped to contribute to the fact that New Zealand did declare itself nuclear-free in legislation three years later, and we still are that today. And don't be fooled, nuclear weapons have not got any safer today than they were 25 years ago. So it is, it is really good that we still have that. But I would say today our, our, the biggest 
threat, security threat that the planet faces is climate change. And yet again, it's the Pacific that will be on the front line of the impacts. In fact, already feeling the impacts of, of that global threat already. And that today is what the, the, the biggest priority is for Greenpeace. And we have our third warrior um, in the spirit and the long held tradition of the first warrior that will have its keel laid on Saturday, European time, well, the July the 10th European time, and it will um, be the beginning of a new era for Greenpeace because it's the first time we will have built our own Rainbow Warrior rather than buying an old boat and fixing it up, and it will continue the tradition of the two, her two predecessors and will continue the struggle for both a nuclear-free planet as well as trying to combat the most dangerous threat we face today, which is climate change. So, um, on, onwards we go. <laughs> and you have to be an eternal optimist in this game, and that's some of the fabulous paintings that Pat Hanley does. I'm very optimistic. <laughs> so, um, it's really nice to have this mixture of both celebration and commemoration here. So thank you, Scott, for putting this together. Northland is very lucky. And um, thank you for um, coming here today. I made it. <laughs>